The ammo collection used to just sit on top of a cabinet and it was overflowing. I was going on the road and collecting, going to gun shows and stuff, and I would bring stuff home and throw it on the pile. Bring stuff home and throw it on the pile. So what I did since the pile was overflowing is put the pile into these drawers. And what we're going to do in this series of videos is explore the drawers. So let's get to it. All right, we're digging through the ammo collection that's right now kind of halfway sorted. It's just distributed really into these drawers. I'm going to pull out some of the green drawers next. This one's pretty fun already. I can tell this one's going to be a good one. All right, so this is a green drawer full of clips. What? All right, so we got a bunch of different clips in here and they don't even know what they all are. So this is some sort of a neck round. Doesn't say anything. It says 92547. So the way it looks and the way the head stamps are, I'm guessing Chinese. So that means Russian, Chinese, basically the same thing. Ah, my finger thingy fell off. Um, I might go grab another glove. This to me seems uh, Chinese. This seems Tokrov to me. So 9mm Tok maybe. This, I don't know what it is, but I'm thinking it's German, pre-762 uh, by 39. This says on it, 6.5 by 52R, 14 millimeter Dutch. And then it's got these purple wooden projectiles, super cool, and a really weird clip. It says 26R on it, I have no idea what that is. But I do know, some kind of weird European gun. Then we got an end block clip, right, with uh, some blanks in it, so that you can obviously load blanks in a, uh, for the uh, Gar Garand. And, yeah, that's a good example of a full end block clip with eight rounds. Kind of just in there under tension. You start picking them out of there, they start to fall out. Then we've got, uh, I don't know what this is, 35 Remington, interesting. So 35 Remington, I thought was a lever action. So I don't know what this goes into, somebody know? It looks like a nice straight stripper clip for 35 Remington. This to me kind of looks like this other one, but it doesn't probably, isn't. It'll say seven, Point eight by 53 and it looks like it's got a Chinese star on it but is that right looks like it has a star in a circle and to me this looks like a couple of different rounds here well, this says right here seven six five by 53 a couple of different types of rounds so it's sort of like collections on these clips this one's interesting and again no idea Uh, 1887 is all it says on the bottom so I'm guessing some old gun maybe a lever action this one looks super weird uh, very met, uh, airplane looking military looking clip here German looking in some ways it says FN 48 so no idea what these are Interesting clip though. Uh, this is a second one of those, so that's the same one as that other one. This one is pretty easy to identify from a distance because we're talking, well, first it moves, not all of them move, and then it jacks up into the bigger thing here. Uh, then you start looking at the rounds on it, and those are pretty easy to identify. So 30 carbine, M1 carbine jam this into the uh, back of the uh, bolt or yeah I guess chamber no bolt I guess receiver receiver probably and then uh, slap them down so this is a bunch of th 380s what 380 ACPs 380 auto on an M16 stripper clip why would you want to do this why would you want to do this? 
So, I mean, sure it fits, but why would you want to do it? That's the question. So again, uh, we'll put extra bonus points to whoever can put a link to the video that would understand why or explain why you'd want to do that. All right, next we got a uh, a quick strip from, are these from Tough? Yeah, these are from Tough, and these are rubber, flexible, kind of the same material that Peckmeyer rubber's made out of, and uh, they hold six rounds. They've got kind of a slit and a shape that holds the rounds securely, but doesn't, um, you don't have to fight getting them in here. To, let's say it that way. I mean, it's going to hold them securely, but some of these things are so secure that you never get them out. It's not like that. You can definitely peel them out of here pretty easy, but they stay put. Uh, so not quite a clip, but similar to a clip. Then we got a plastic version of an M16 stripper clip. Super weird. And I don't have anything in it. It's got a little bit of a bend to it. I wonder what's up with that. Got a couple of speed loaders here. A couple of, and then a uh, moon clip. So a speed loader has some kind of mechanism, either pops everybody out or lets go of everybody really quickly. Uh, like this one, you kind of twist it and everybody is let go. They all fall out. Uh, and then when you lock it, they would all be locked in again. So to load it, you just set them all in there when it's in its, well, it doesn't matter if it's even open or closed, just set them all in there, twist it, and if it locks them, it's locked. And if you put them all in there while it was locked, let's say you open it, lock it, and put them all in there, it's no big deal. So it's locked. You put them all in there. If I turned it over, they'd fall out. So you just wiggle it again. And now when you wiggle it, it locked and unlocked and locked. Then we got a moon clip. A moon clip is just a piece of metal that holds the rounds, in this case 45 auto, so that they would fit into a revolver that maybe shoots 45 Colt or 455 or whatever one of those other, 454. Whatever some of those other calibers are that are 45 in diameter but can't headspace the auto round. So it's usually pretty difficult to get these things in and out. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to bend them all up. But uh, they're held in there pretty good. And they're not coming out. No. So you can take my word for it and go find something else if you want to see what they look like. We got a uh, end block that's designed to hold just a few rounds. And they make these for ceremonies and stuff. Oh, we got a couple of different, oh, I guess we got a couple of more things here. This is another one of those, or a different type of uh, polymer um, stripper clip to hold 10 rounds of 5.56 to load three of these into one magazine. So these will come in your bandolier, two of these in each pouch of a bandolier. That way you've got 20 times 10, 200 rounds, and they're in convenient little blocks of 10 like this. Now you can use these to jam right into a magazine with a loader and then jam three of these into each magazine and your mags are full or just jam one of these into a magazine. You got 10 rounds in the magazine it'll still work. So these thermi thermold uh, polymer stripper clips, I imagine they thought a lot of people just need the stripper clip to load once and then that's it. So uh, maybe that was the idea. These look like they got a little bit more meat more material to them, so maybe designed to be used more often. Either way, just another way to hold, in this case, a bunch of different anodized cases, different ways to uh, put a material through electrolysis, electrolysis through positive and negative uh, magnetism or whatever, or energy, to, uh, to attract the different materials to the case to give them the, cons the characteristics they're looking for for rust prevention or lubricity. Then you've got a couple of polymer cases uh, with some different types of uh, projectiles in them may, uh, as samples from the companies that made the polymer cases years ago when those first came out. This is a uh, dummy round, I believe. And then a, uh, I don't know what that is, 300 whisper or something, and then a blank. So just kind of a collection of 556 shaped cartridges, but not all of them are 5.56. Five, 
I guess this is a gem tech. So this was their gem tech round. I forgot what caliber that was. 300 blackout. Yeah, okay. It was just win uh, gem tech's version of it. All right, and next we have underneath of everything a little tough strip of uh, for 22s that I have a bunch of different 22 short blank, 22 short, 22, a 17. Uh, 22 long rifle, a 22 long rifle shot shell, a magnum shot shell. This is probably a 22 long Winchester rimfire, so a little bit shorter than a magnum. Then a uh, Winchester magnum, 22 Winchester magnum, and then the uh, uh, or this is the Mach 2, and this is the HMR. I forget which one's which, but one of them's made out of a magnum neck down to 17, and the other one's made out of a long rifle neck down to 17, and they're definitely the coolest little rimfire calibers. So that's a nice little section assortment of rimfires on a tough strip. And then we get into some little small, oh, I guess I do have a couple more clips down here. So this is a clip of some kind of weird armor piercing 5.56. Two, two, three Remington, but uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on with these projectiles. Some kind of an interesting steel-looking projectile. Get that back on there. So the uh, M16 stripper clips have this little tab. You need to go in there, jam it over, and then push that tab back up, and that stops them from just falling out the edge. Next, we have a Chinese stripper clip with a bunch of Chinese 762 by 39 ammo. So this was either made for an SKS or loading 7.62, well, 8K magazines. That's all those clips. Then we get a couple of belts. So this first belt is just a bunch of empty cases with uh, 308. So uh, a lot of times what you see is these around helmets and stuff. Uh, people just take a bunch of the different uh, empty cases in a bunch of just uh, dis disintegrating links like this and uh, wrap them into a belt. This is just a short little version of it. This is the same belt, but with an assortment of 308s. So we got, what do we got here? We got a blank, we got a dummy, we got another blank, blank, something, dummy, 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 plastic projectile, plastic projectile, plastic, 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 plastic. So all of these are usually made to be shot indoors, uh, inside of uh, indoor training facilities and stuff. So they're not, not lethal, they're just so that you don't damage the walls of the, of the buildings you're in. This is wood or plastic, so probably the same concept. And then some real stuff. I don't know what green and white is on 308. Orange, red, and red. And typically red is uh, incendiary and or, or tracer, and orange is incendiary, I think, or vice versa. But it can be different depending on the country. So I, without a manual or some kind of a chart, I wouldn't know. But it definitely looks neat. And this is actually just from one, if I remember right, this is pretty much from one gun show. Uh, maybe one gun show and a couple of items I had here. But I have not had time to create a 308 collection. So this is pretty much from the Tulsa gun show. One year, walking around, uh, collecting 308s. Uh, mostly from like two or three purchases too. Just purchasing a couple of interesting collection type of purchases, you know, pile of ammo that included this stuff. And some of this other stuff is distributed, or the rest of the stuff that I purchased would be distributed in the other drawers here. So this is neat and uh, something that once I can get everything together and figured out, uh, I'll go through all my 308s and put them all onto a belt. Because this is definitely the way I like to hold my collections or store my collections. It just looks neat to me and it keeps them kind of separate. So with that in mind, we have a couple, of, I guess I'll go straight to this one. So this is a belt of 223, except, uh, so just very much like this little piece here with a bunch of empty cases. This is just a bunch of 223. Again, a lot of people use these on helmets because they look cool. But when you have uh, a collection in there, it's a whole different story. So a couple of different 300 blackouts, it looks like. Uh, then we get probably some other calibers here also. Some 22 two, 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 two or something, and then uh, then it gets into just all different kinds of 5.56. Five, uh, this one is 222 two, two Remington, so I guess this is the one that's different. So a lot longer neck on this one, 
But then we get into some more of those polymer projectiles, some dummy rounds, solid plastic rounds, some more dummy rounds, just solid plastic inert rounds. These are simunition. Um, I'd have to think for a second. Some of them are simunition and some of them are the other brands. Uh, then we got a couple of blanks, then some actual ammo again, some hunting ammo, some interesting looking silver tip looking ammo, uh, a bunch of different military stuff, some tracers, incendiary, armor, steel core, a couple of different types of shapes, and then some 300 blackouts. So this is probably most of my collection of 223. I don't have a ton of it. It's not my favorite uh, ammo. But there's certainly a ton of it. I mean, you could go nuts going with 223 ammo. So this is definitely a good sample, though. Looks pretty neat, and this is super cheap to collect. Just go to the range and ask people every once in a while if you can bum around. Ask police or other people, that, like instructors, people that go to shoot a lot, if they'll grab ammo for you. Uh, all right, and then uh, this last one, I'm not sure what this is. Does it even tell me? It was five bucks. But it's some sort of a belt that's held together by, like, chain mail. So it's some sort of weird European way of making a belt with, uh, I don't know what this is. I guess it's 355 five, or 544, five, 762x54R, I think. It looks like it. But it could be something else similar, for all I know. So it's a really weird belt. I don't know what it is. I know what it isn't, so I knew I decided to get it. So strange. It looks like you'd have to literally... These things do break, or they would be broken. Ah, just so fragile. Alright, so, uh, that's this drawer. A whole bunch of different belt segments, and stripper clips, and small segments of collections in a drawer. So that's kind of interesting, and like I say, some of this stuff I've had for a while, some of it kind of accumulated, and some of it uh, I've been... I had been traveling and throwing stuff on top of the pile, and this was an attempt to kind of just really separate it more than organize it, just to get it from falling off the top of the cabinet it was all collecting on. All right, so let us know in the comments what you're thinking of this series. Uh, it's happening, so you're going to see this whole series if you like it or not, but if you like it and you let me know, then maybe we can delve in and turn the cameras on as we start to sort and decide what to keep and that kind of thing. Otherwise, check it out because most of the stuff is going... The reason I'm sorting it is because most of it's going to auction. All right, thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments which one of the videos in this series you like best. So let us know what you think. We'll be watching the comments wherever you find the video over on GunStreamer.com or on GunTube.org. Thank you for supporting our projects. If you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee, check out our Patreon channel. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourages you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thank you for watching GunWebsites.com.